I am Samita. I am an eco entrepreneur, a fashion designer, and academic. I live and work out of Melbourne, Australia. But you know what? With my e commerce store, Dida Eco Gifts Online, I have followers and clients all over the world. So join me. Welcome to another edition of Dida's um, weekly roundup and sneak peek. But you know what? Surprise, surprise. I'm not alone today. I have company. And guess who's with me? So it's Jennifer Georges. So Jennifer, of you know, her label is now getting pretty famous down under. So it's called Genev. So uh, most of you, you know, you, who've been part of the Didarati, the Dida Mail Club since a while, you are not unfamiliar with Jennifer. You know, Jennifer's uh, interview on Learn with Samita, Dida's YouTube channel, um, is growing exponentially and organically. Oh God, Today, Jennifer, we are talking about mood boards and storyboards. So, as you know, we are imparting. Uh, learning about fashion design and costume design and design in general on Learn with Samita, which is Dida's YouTube channel. And currently we are talking mood boards and storyboards. Um, so I, you have and thank you enormously for those fabulous storyboards that you've designed, especially for um, Dida and Learn with Samita. But uh, tell me, Jennifer, uh, what do you think about mood boards and storyboards? And did you use mood boards and storyboards for designing this collection? And if yes, then how did you go about it? So do you think mood boards and storyboards are useful? And how, if you work with them at all, how do you work with them? Um, yes, so yeah, mood boards and storyboards, first for me, uh, we began using them during uni and we were introduced to them as students and it kind of just helps frame your um, collection or what you're trying to do or your project or whatever it is. So um, I do love to use them and I use them quite frequently. So I like initially start with a concept or a theme or an idea of a range or collection that I want to work with. And then, so we create a storyboard and a mood board. So the mood board generally for me will set the tone and the mood of the um, collection and where we want it to go. Um, but it more so sets the tone, whereas the storyboards I feel um, help to define like all the separate aspects. So for my storyboard for this collection, for example, I had the theme, the collection is called Inanna Rising. Yeah. So, um, just to give a bit of context, Inanna yeah. is a um, an ancient Sumerian goddess. So the theme was heavily um, around goddesses and you know uh, powerful beings and powerful women. So we used because my culture is originally Chaldean from Iraq, so I'm Middle Eastern, um, and in my heritage. Um, if you look back at ancient Mesopotamia and then you look even further back um, into the ancient Sumerian civilization, um, that's where I kind of gathered that inspiration. So they had their own kind of pantheon that they um, had several gods and goddesses under and a lot of the goddesses were praised quite highly. Um, and Inanna was one of the main goddesses. So she was the goddess of love and power and war. Um, so we used her as the main um, centre of the inspiration for the collection. So essentially what I do is I just gather in little inspirations, so certain images, I take the ideas, so the idea of this goddess and her, the what she provided to the people, so the strength and the power and the um, everything that, the comfort and security which she gave to the people who followed her essentially. Um, yes, so we take that and I take images which I really like and I gather them together and I use those as themes 
to explore further for the collection. So um, with this storyboard, I took a few of the ancient um, sculptures, images of the ancient um like there were some certain vases and things that i used as um inspiration for shapes um and color and tone so that's kind of where the initial ideas come from and then you develop further more into your silhouettes and like so what would these um goddesses for example what i would visualize them wearing and what i would visualize them their presence as um yeah and just develop further from there so um i really enjoy creating those boards not just for the collections but just to give you direction because then you can always go back to that if you kind of lose track you can always go back to that and um reground yourself to the theme of the collection and ensure your designing um is quite concise and straight to that and also what i like to add in the storyboards um usually is the the customer I'm designing for. So the it was inspired by goddesses, but it was the, more of like women of the past meeting the women of today. So um, connecting the two and just using that inspiration to design for the woman of today and what she would um, also like m help her feel, you know, empowered through her clothing and um, help her feel you know, stronger and more ready to face the day within what she's wearing. Um, so we take those elements and we connect them to today's woman. So I like to put an image of, of a woman who I like see as today's target um, female who I'm designing for that girl. And I put her in the storyboard as well. I try and find an image that will resonate with my customer and put that on the image on the storyboard sorry um and that also helps connect all the dots and i i take the main colors from the collection and i try and keep them all in there and a few add a few silhouettes as well yeah. you've made several relevant points here jennifer first of all you said that mood board sets the tone and that's exactly what a mood board should be it's like more generic more loose you know it just gives you a broad yeah. overview a sense of direction whereas with the storyboard your collection becomes more defined the second point you made you talked about your your heritage and how you derive from uh the the religious icons you know which you are familiar with you've been brought up with these kind this kind of imagery and uh, what you've been talking about is intrinsic to not only Sumerian culture, but I also, if you think about the Egyptians or if you think about the Indus Valley civilization, you know, all the old civilizations rely heavily on this kind of uh, iconography and um, also imagery, which you have incorporated so beautifully in your um, um, storyboard. So, and and the third thing that you've, uh, mentioned and that's something i have been asked many a times many people ask me that samita what if the collection doesn't turn out to be exactly like the storyboard or the mood board but you know it's just that the storyboard defines a collection it doesn't bind the collection like you are not straight jacketed into something you know you are it's it's all right for you to make changes you know make changes uh, within the storyboard and make changes while you are progressing uh, to the to making the actual collection so i think that's okay I and mean, we all like to have that little bit of flexibility so if you adapt you know your storyboard as you progress it's only a you know this, this is something that happens in due course that you make adjustments at times maybe with the fabric you know uh, you might not be able to apply the fabric that you had originally thought about or even with the silhouettes, with the designs, with your customers, you know, you might feel that maybe I am inspired by this kind of, um, these kind of motifs, these kind of, you know, like you talked about the vase, but in real life, you do have to make changes. So that's all good. And I think you've made three or four very valid points in um in what you said right now so that's what we try to communicate that storyboard uh, definitely is the foundation is the basis a good storyboard is a like a a good foundation it's like a firm foundation 
And, you know, it's like when you are building something, a good storyboard is like the foundation of a firm building. So if you have a good storyboard, it helps you create a, a resolved kind of collection. Uh, so, and as we all know, Jennifer, we don't do these things without any rhyme or reason. I mean, we just don't spend hours uh, drawing up mood boards and storyboards. So we do it for uh, specific reasons. First of all, as a student, you might, because I have lots of students who are following me on Learn with Sumita. So for as a student, a storyboard is important from the point of view of your student presentation in front of your examiners, you know. So you have to show wherever you go within the your institution or if you go outside of the institution. You know, if you go for a job interview, everyone would like to see the progression of an of an idea from um, concept to fruition, you know, to completion. So that's one thing you use your storyboards for. And then once you are already, you know, in the industry, if you're already part of the workforce, you might want to use a storyboard to be able to sell your collection to your clients. So we at times don't have the collection ready and we try to get some orders, pre-book the orders on the basis of storyboards. So obviously, if we get 10 minutes with buyers, we are lucky if we get 10 minutes. And within those 10 minutes, we have to um, you know, convince the client to sign on the dotted line and to make, you know, place an order on the basis of what we are trying to convey through storyboards, you know. So the clothes are not there, the fashion accessories are not there, but we have our storyboards. So Jennifer, in that case, how would you, what do you think are the essentials that we should have on our storyboard? Uh, what are those four or five things that, that, that are must haves on storyboards so that your client or your examiner or interviewer, you know, gets a fair idea of what is it that you are, you're, you're trying to convey, you're trying to talk about? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. I think, if you're yeah if you're stuck with time it's also the storyboard um, is a great way to show the inspiration and um, the reasoning behind the collection when you don't have a big like a lot of time exactly like they can just look at that storyboard and immediately understand what's going on so i think it's very important to have um yeah like two three core images of your inspiration um and I like to put the colors, so I like to put the um, colors, if there's any prints, put the print in there, um, but the, just the core colors of the collection as well. And I like to put like the, put the customer in there as well because that helps the buyer visualize like exactly. who is going to be wearing it. So who yeah. are these pieces for? Like you can also put a few silhouettes or, you know, if you have any pictures or sketches of what you're creating. But um, making sure you keep the customer as well um, as a high priority on there because that will help them visualize, oh, okay, yes, this is the, the person who will be wearing these clothes and this is why they're going to be wearing these clothes because, you know, um, they will love this theme also and they'll love this shape also. So um, it will be a very clear and concise thing for them to look at and get it straight away um, and it's a lot easier for um, for them to, you know, kind of see that mm -hmm. rather than you having to explain, you know, um, over, over, over a long period of time. Yeah, it, it will be a lot. And a picture tells a thousand words, as we always hear. So yes. um, it will give a lot more context in a lot um, quicker time. Yes, yeah. I, I think that's very relevant. Actually, I I like the fact that you mentioned the customer, because if you put your put up a customer profile or the typical customer, then I think the person who's sitting in front of you and if he or she can connect their own customer with the customer on your storyboard. So if they feel, yes, this is the customer and it looks like my customer and I would be able to sell these clothes to my client. So then that's when they are ready to uh, sign on an order. So that's how we summarize and any any tips for like a mind blowing storyboard your little uh, secret like a trade secret that you might want to share exclusively with Dida's um, clients and learn with Samita audience 
what is it that you do jen you got so many awards and you you doing so well so what's oh, your trade so secret <laughs> um, yeah well i don't know i don't know if i have any secrets i mean my um thing with storyboards is i will take like so long to find that perfect image you know so uh, like it's so easy to just like find a picture quickly and chuck it on there but um but you need to find the right image the right images to give the correct idea so i would just say even if it takes you like a couple of hours spend a lot of time in finding that perfect kind of one or two or three like core images that really, really get to the heart of your um, idea or your theme, because that's the most important thing. And then, you know, make those images larger, obviously, on the board, um, and then mm. center everything around that. And sometimes it's also good to add um, some text, like I'll add maybe one or two sentences, but like really short and straight to the point. Um, and I like a heading as well. But yeah, the image, that main image is, I think, the most important thing. And if you put a customer image, find, like, a really good um, customer image, like, that really sells that person. So yes. straight away yep. you look at it and you know, yeah, I can see this person. Like, I can see this woman. I know who she is. I understand where this is going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and do some research, some genuine research. Don't bump off the first picture that you land on the internet. Be careful mm -hmm. about copyrights and make the work as original, especially once you are in the workforce. Be, be very careful about copyrights. And so, Jen, the last question, and people, I can see that we are already getting the likes, etc. so people must be inspired. Where is it? And I'll share the, share the photos of your collection, new collection on YouTube. Uh, uh, so where will they find you, find those fabulous clothes? I was liking one or, or your scarves, for instance. Is it your web shop or um, where is it they can find your collection to buy? Um, yeah, awesome. So uh, you can shop on our website, which is shopgenev.com. Um, so just shop and then Genev, J-E-N-E-V.com. Uh, so you can always shop on there for any of our pieces. Or you can currently we have a residency with Toga Boutique, which is located in Nidri. Um, I think it's Keel Road, Nidri. So we have um, a little pop up happening there for February. So we're only there for another week. But if you want to come in and say hi, I'll, I'm there every day. So you can come and say hi, uh, meet me, try on any of the pieces. Um, and we're there until the end of February. So, but if you can't make it, just head on shopgenev.com and you'll be able to see all of our pieces there and the new collection. Which is wonderful. And I'll put all of those links and it's all, I think it's already on the first video and it, it will be there on the second video as well. Now that brings us to, uh, to the end of a, a very nice and cozy chit chat with Jennifer Georges, the founder of uh, the label Genev. Um, as, the, uh, as mentioned in my last uh, Facebook Live uh, that on last Sunday, that we are um, turning the spotlight on makers, craftspersons, artisans, um, because that's what I've been doing all my life. And I'd like to, you know, share my, you know, the experiences I have had with artisan communities all over the world and also individual makers and craftspeople. So if there's someone, a maker that, you, and it's not only in Asia, Europe, in Australia, in New Zealand, I have a, a very broad network, a very a very in-depth network with the uh, crafts communities there. So I, I'll bring gradually all of that to you. And if you happen to know of a craftsperson that you would like us to cover, uh, please let us know and I do that for you. I try to cover as many interesting uh, makers and shakers. And also, um, if you happen to be a craftsperson yourself, please do not hesitate to approach me. And uh, I'll try to, you know, one way or another, I'd, I'd try to connect to you. So this is me, Samita, signing off with the beautiful Jennifer Georges with me. She's beautiful, in and out, accomplished. And uh, do check out her label, um, uh, Genev, and do check out the interview that she did 
uh, on Learn with Samita earlier, so I'll put it on the cards. Uh, so uh, that's me and Janev signing off. Bye for now, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Thanks, Samita. Thanks for having me. Bye. It's my pleasure.